Good evening and welcome. Welcome to our midweek Bible study. It's been a while since we've done this. Uh, we've had the activities uh, at the location at Berean and um, so it's good to be back here on a live stream with you on a Wednesday evening. So I'm glad to just connect with you. I hope you're having a good week. Uh, it's getting colder. It's um, definitely you can feel it's that time of the year. I'd, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about uh, the concept of love. Now, not love, obviously, as, you know, romantic love, the love between your husband and wife, you and your girlfriend, um, even, you know, you and your kids uh, or you and your parents, but, but rather the kind of love of connection that, now, obviously, you know, those kinds of love have parts of this as well, uh, but the kind of love of connection that Jesus speaks into uh, numerous times, but especially throughout the book of John. Uh, throughout the book of John, Jesus speaks a lot, and, and John records this about love. If you recall correctly, Jesus uh, says that's how people know you're going to be my disciples, if you love one another. Um, he also speaks a lot about uh, the, his love for us and how we in turn as his followers will love him. And that's what I'm going to talk a little bit about tonight in John chapter 14. Uh, you know, John chapter 14, Jesus speaks and we often, re, we often talk about this and refer to it. Uh, Jesus speaks about the power of prayer and talks about uh, the Holy Spirit coming into our lives after, you know, Jesus isn't here. He was telling his disciples this. Uh, Jesus speaks about how he, he answers prayer, how uh, he gives us power through prayer. But in, in chapter 14, he also speaks about this idea of loving him. He says he's going to send the Holy Spirit into our hearts. Uh, but but he, he talks about this idea of love, and then he makes an interesting statement. He says, uh, in John chapter 14, verse 15, he says, if you love me, keep my commands. And I'll, I'll talk more about that in, in a second, but he also says in verse 21, whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. Now in, in evangelical you know, Christianity, in, in Christian faith, uh, in church life, in the concept of teaching Christianity, especially as parents to our kids, uh, as discipling new Christians, we often talk about uh, the principles of, of Jesus and his passions and what we should do, and, and, and rightly so. Uh, but sometimes we even, we even refer to them as, as commands, not necessarily the kind of commands that Jesus referred to, and uh, he wasn't necessarily speaking about enforcements, but oftentimes we look at that idea as enforcements. And so uh, we think of this, this concept that, well, if I'm a Christian, then these things are going to be enforced upon me. I, I have to do this and I have to do that. Uh, I have to keep these rules. You know, I have to live good moral life and speak well my neighbor. And as Jesus said, if we're his disciples, we're going to love each other. So I have to love other people. And we look at these things that uh, basically we look at our qualifications, more or less, of being a Christian or a follower of Christ. And some of that idea... Um, is not necessarily wrong for us to understand that those are the principles, those are um, the guidelines that Jesus really wants us to embrace and his passions. However, if you read through John chapter 14, and, and like I read in verse 21, uh, Jesus said, whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. Sometimes we, we look so much at the idea of keeping the rules and the commands. And even in the idea of love, to where we say, well, we have to love each other. We, we have to show our love to God. We have to worship. And I think for many of us, we, we have these intense moments of worship, the incredible times with Jesus um, that is an encounter that isn't by force, by no means. But sometimes we still come back to this idea that, you know, we, we really need to worship. We need to praise God. Rightly so. That's God's passion. That's God's... Uh, principles, that's God's uh, sort of, again, some of his moral codes. But what I want to encourage you with tonight, and I believe this is what Jesus is saying through chapter 14, is that if we first understand who Jesus is, if we study Jesus, if we get to know him uh, through through the scripture, now we have you know Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, all of the New Testament where they constantly, the disciples that were with Jesus, write about Jesus. And as you read about him and you get to know him, and you get to understand who he is. Uh, this, this idea of not just love as a forced love, but the idea of love as sort of the combination of 
standing in awe of who he is and what he did. Um, being intensely filled with the idea and realization that he poured grace into my heart, that he forgave me for what he did, seeing his love on the cross. And when, when all of that combines and it wells up within me, and I look at Jesus Christ, not just as the one I should worship, not just as the one that I, that I really need to call the Son of God, not just as the one that I've been taught I need to live by his passions, but I look at Jesus Christ as the one that I love because of what he did for me, because of who he is. And this kind of love as in standing in awe, this kind of love as in admiration, this kind of love as in a realization that he's beyond anything I could ever do or be, and yet he cares about me. And it stirs this, this connection, this passion of love that I believe out of that, and this is what Jesus means. When we come to that point of love in who Jesus is, what he's done, uh, that he's our savior, then these rules that, that we talk about, these, these passions that we really need to follow, these must-dos come out of this uh, sort of gracious heart of we love him. So we, we want to do what he wants us to do. We, we want to do what he does. We, we want to be passionate about the things that he's passionate. And when we have this kind of heartfelt gratitude, um, passion, love for Jesus Christ because of who he is and, and what he did, then that same kind of love filters through us and goes horizontal. Uh, so, you know, again, as I noted earlier, sometimes believers in Jesus as Christians, as people that go to church together as friends, as family, uh, we sort of preach to ourselves or we encourage each other. Well, we have to show love to each other. What if, what if all of those things we need to do would stem out of this overwhelming, unbelievable, standing in all kind of love that we have when we understand who Jesus is. And then when we understand what Jesus did for us, when we understand how he died on the cross, when we understand how he gave everything and, and, and we wanna be like that, then this horizontal love with each other um, would, not only, would not only be what we do, it'd be what we intensely wanna grow because we wanna be more like the person we love. You know, I, I often think of um, kids that idolize their parents, maybe growing up, uh, maybe a daughter looks at their mom and thinks she's the most beautiful thing in the world and looks at her mom's wedding pictures and says, you know, sometime I want to be like that. I want to have this wedding. And you know, I think of, of, of my sons and I think of sons that uh, go through that age bracket and, and we could talk about the age bracket the kids go through, right? But they go through this age bracket where, uh, you know, their dad's just, he's the man. And, and, and they love him, but more than just a love as in, and as in caring, but almost as standing in awe, like, when I grow up, I want to be like him. If that's the kind of love that you and I have in Jesus Christ, then all of these other things are, are, are going to become um, not only things we do because we really feel like we should, but they're just going to just gonna be part of who we are. So... I'm going a long way around of, in John chapter 14, Jesus brings this concept together that followers of him, disciples of him, uh, people that are around him, uh, they, do, they do all of this stuff and, and they are like him because of a genuine love. Not a love that we have to have, not a love that's forced, but the realization that I am in all of my savior and that love, the respect, the awe, the passion, the honor, all combines into this incredible feeling, this, this movement, that that's how I want to be. So my encouragement tonight is um, learn to know Jesus so well. Study him. Figure, figure, figure out what, what scripture says about him. Communicate with him. Dig into this relationship that he wants to have with you. No one can do that for you to the intensity of you and Jesus Christ. But when you dig deep, when you, uh, can, when you, when you very much focus on like, I want to understand Jesus. I want to understand what this, 
this love, this passion, this feeling of all this, and you get there, then these other things just, just really change. So uh, I believe sometimes the struggles, the, um, the difficulties we walk through in life, the things we feel like we have to do and, and, and we get to the place which is human where Paul says, you know, what I really don't want to do, I do. And what I don't want to do, I, I end up doing. And um, then we have the same way where we, 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 we know we should and we want to love the people around us. We know we should and we want to show our love to God, but we, we just don't so many times. And I believe it could be. It could be because we don't nourish and intensify the love, the relationship, of me to Jesus Christ, who he is, what he means to me. So let's dig, let's dig into who Jesus is, learn to know him, I promise you. That feeling of amazement, the feeling of love, the feeling of gratitude becomes very real and it changes you. And this is what Jesus really means when he talks about the new birth, about your, your heart being changed. Allow me to pray with you tonight. Lord Jesus, I thank you that you have done everything for us. And you're this, this, this leader, this, um, this, this shepherd, this, this savior, um, the one that we worship, not because we have to, but we stand in all of who you are and your grace. So God, I pray that in me tonight and each one of our listeners, each one that tunes into this, would you, would you birth within us this uh, incredible feeling of amazement of who you are and birth within us this this, this passion, this love, this, uh, this sort of um, incredible emotion of understanding that you are everything. And out of that, Jesus, I believe is how you want us to live. And then um, doing your passions, loving others, being more like you becomes so much more normal in our hearts, in our lives. So would you stir that within us tonight? God, be with each listener. I pray you'd, you'd intrigue us to dig more about who you are, to study you more, to understand you more. Uh, help us all to have a good week. God, I pray you'd allow us to go tonight, to bed tonight and get some rest. We, we just, we bask in who you are and we, we love you, Jesus. And I pray you'd stir that within our hearts. I pray in Jesus' name, amen. Uh, thanks for joining us tonight. And don't forget to come on Sunday. Come to uh, hear Berean at Berean Live uh, or join us online, but we want you uh, to join us as we look at Thanksgiving and the inspirations of a thankful heart with the season of Thanksgiving. May God bless you. Have a good night.